Hello, welcome to the Bay Area Case Studies Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. A few quick housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your cameras and microphones are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening, including another one next hour. Be sure to sign up for more if you haven't done so already at the same place you signed up for this one. This presentation is being recorded. It'll be available within about a week. It's drivescan.com slash BACS or BACS. Now, very quickly, you can't possibly learn all you wanna know about a school in a six minute presentation as we have six six minute presentations coming your way here momentarily. But you can learn whether or not you're interested in more information from one or more of the schools that you see tonight. So use this to uh, see how much interest you can get or what interest you get from it and uh, get a lot of general info so that you can follow up later. All right, I've gotten the housekeeping stuff out of the way. I'll step out of the way and turn it over to our first school to present, be the representative from Williams College. All right. Hi, everyone. Um, so my name is Jillian Wood. I'm assistant director in the admission office at Williams. Um, and I hope that you are healthy and safe uh, where you are. Um, a little bit about um, Williams in terms of where, where are we? Um, we are uh, located in the northwest corner of Massachusetts. So right near the borders of both Vermont and New York State. Um, and so we're a small liberal arts college. We have an undergraduate student body of around 2,200. Um, and our student to faculty ratio is seven to one. So that's really intentional, um, keeping our, our class sizes small to really facilitate that um, learning and that sort of interaction between students and faculty. Um, because we're undergraduate focused, um, all of the classes are taught by professors. So there aren't um, graduate students teaching undergrads. Um, it's really all um, students working directly with um, the faculty. Um, in terms of how our academics work, um, we operate under what's called uh, divisional requirements. Um, so you might hear a variety of different terms terminology for um, uh, curricular requirements um, and how students move through their academic journey. At Williams, um, all of our academic programs are divided into sort of these three divisions. Division one houses arts and languages, division two houses uh, social sciences, and then division three is math and science. And so we um, have all of our students take at least three classes in each of these three divisions by the time they graduate. Um, so on the one hand, there's that flexibility, right? Um, you don't have to take that, you know, calculus class um, if you're looking in that division three realm, but it's still gonna push you a little bit to take classes in a variety of different areas. Um, learning at Williams is really interdisciplinary. Um, and so a lot of students actually find that this helps them bring together a lot of different interests and explore them through these different academic lenses. Um, I mentioned that our class sizes are small um, on, on average, and there's a range. There are definitely those classes that are going to be um, on the larger side. Let's say you're taking that intro to psych class, um, you know, that might be a larger lecture course. But on the other end of our spectrum, we have um, a unique uh, style of class that we offer, um, and it's uniquely small, and it's called the Williams Tutorial. And the Williams Tutorial is just two students and the professor, and that's the whole class. Um, and so the way that it works is that these three um, meet once a week for about an hour to an hour and a half, and they're diving really deeply into um, their material. So, um, you know, this isn't an independent study. It's a course. Uh, designed by the professor um, and we offer this style of class across every discipline and at every level so you can take it your first semester at Williams or if you're like I don't know I maybe want to check out some other things first um, you can take it later on you can take it deep into your into your major um, we adapted that style of learning from Oxford University um, and so we sort of uh, spread it out across all of our our disciplines at Williams so that students no matter what you're studying um, can take advantage of that style of learning 
Um, another thing that's unique at Williams is um, our emphasis on research opportunities. So yes, we're a small liberal arts college, but we have the resources to really um, open up research in so many different ways to our students. And so um, they take advantage of this in the summer um, and they are actually paid for that work. They can do intensive research across any um, and all disciplines. So yes, we've got students in the labs, in our actually brand new uh, science facilities, um, or they might be um, doing research for a women's genders and sexuality studies professor um, or alongside a political science professor. Um, so um, it's happening in the summer, it's happening during the year, they can be research assistants. Um, and so um, I would say something that um, that is something that's unique about William, just sort of the accessibility and sort of the breadth of all of the research opportunities that students have, um, in addition to that kind of research that they'll already be doing in their coursework. And the last thing that I want to mention um, before I run out of my, of my six minutes time um, is affordability at Williams, which is really important. Um, and when we think about affordability, um, so, so first I should mention that we meet 100% of demonstrated need for our students, but when we talk about that, um, we really think of it beyond that sticker price, not just, okay, what is tuition, room, and board, but what are all of the things that a student um, accesses or, or needs to access um, throughout their time at Williams? Um, and so, for example, every student who receives financial aid at Williams receives something called the book grant. And I apologize if I froze on anyone. I got a little notification that said my um, internet was unstable, so apologies if that happened. Um, uh, but what I was saying was um, that um, the book grant means that all students um, receiving financial aid, um, all of their books and supplies for courses are free. Um, and that's just one example. There's free storage, there's um, health insurance for students who need it. Um, your financial aid travels with you, so you want to do a study away program um, that uh, is not organized by Williams, um, you can still do that and have your financial aid transfer. Um, so those are just a few examples. Um, definitely feel free to reach out for, for more information. Um, and I see I'm just wrapping up on time. Um, but that's just a little bit about sort of um, how we think about that um, uh, affordability piece and, and what that looks like sort of when it's broken down a little bit. So with that, I will um, hand it back to the facilitator. Thank you very much. And I will mention if any attendees have questions, uh, use the Q&A button. You can ask questions at any time. Also pay attention to the chat. You might get uh, information sent to you from the representatives there. Up next, we will hear from Davidson College. Yeah, hello, good evening, everyone. Let me get my timer set up to uh, count down. But um, thanks for joining in this evening. Glad to have you. My name is Lee Hoffman. I'm an Associate Dean of Admission at Davidson College. And just kind of quick, fast facts. Davidson is um, in Davidson, North Carolina. We're a small liberal arts college, just under 2,000 students. Um, and we're located about 20 miles north of Charlotte, North Carolina. So don't know how your East Coast geography is. We're about three and a half hours in from the mountains hour and a half um, from, or sorry, three and a half hours in from the beach, hour and a half in from the mountains. It is a little past my bedtime here, so I am hanging in there as much as possible with you all. Um, but we have a really great location. So small quintessential college towns, you can see in the photo behind me, um, you know, red brick sidewalks, people hanging outside. Um, it's been a beautiful balmy 75 degrees here for most of the last week. But I'm going to talk a little bit more about the type of students we attract and the experience about Davidson more so than specific majors or things that you could kind of easily click on on the website. Um, so hopefully that will be more helpful to you. Um, and at the end of this, um, as you're seeing us populating our information, um, I will put that in the chat so you can reach out to me with any um, specific questions. But and I talk to students about Davidson and the students that tend to get excited and then enroll here are ones that are incredibly academically focused, but not tunnel focused on academics. So students who just light up in the classroom. Um, if you are that type of student, you're sitting there in a class, your wheels are turning, you want to be involved in the discussion and you want to keep that discussion going outside of class. Um, if you want relationships with, relationships with professors, um, we have small class sizes and really fantastic advising here at Davidson. Um, I love the fact that we have, you know, intentional holistic advisors that are assigned to you before you even get to campus. Um, you get to choose your advisors when you choose your major at the end of sophomore year. So that flexible curriculum time to explore. Um, but also the unintentional advising, I think is one of the most 
powerful things at Davidson. So those professors that you maybe have a class with freshman year, or you know you have a couple classes with, but they're the ones that are you know asking, um, you know, what are you doing this summer? I have a colleague who's writing a book, they need help researching, or I think you might like this study abroad trip, or there's this internship or this grad program, you should check it out. And I hear more stories of students who have gotten connected with opportunities just by conversations after or during class or over coffee or over a meal with professors, um, than kind of those more structured sit down, let me plan out my life type conversations. So it's a powerful community in that sense. Um, it's underpinned by an honor code. A lot of places have honor codes. Davidson's known for kind of taking it to another level. So we have self-scheduled um, finals, unproctored exams, take-home exams. That sounds a little less weird now um, in COVID times, but before, you know, students were taking um, exams sitting in their dorm rooms already um, or in the middle of this field behind me. I know students that will take their finals um, sitting in a hammock or on a blanket. Um, and it kind of means you get to leave your stuff around. Um, our police chief does not encourage that, but Ultimately, it boils down to we attract students that really lead with that sense of integrity and expect that of others around them. And that's a pretty powerful thing when you have that throughout an entire community. Um, another kind of thing that binds our students is the fact that almost all of our students are doing service. Um, a lot of places, you know, a lot of students do service all over the place, but it's really part of the fabric of Davidson, um, both impacting the broader community and the Davidson community too. Um, I love the fact I've been here six years and just looking at what our students have changed on campus between physical spaces, groups on campus, um, you know, even our hiring practices for faculty have changed on campus since I've been here because students wanted a say in that. They wanted a more diverse faculty and they now get a say in doing that. So it's a really powerful small place where you get to be a really, you know, you get to be a cog in this community. You're not just another student, you are a person who is creating this place for what it is. Um, we check all the boxes for things like study abroad and internships and research. You can read all about those opportunities and funding on our website. Um, we have division one sports. We pack kind of a big school feel for a small school. Um, also great arts, music, theater. So I think the cool thing about our students is you typically find them being involved in a lot of different things to be able to have all of that with just 2000 students on campus. Um, and really just really engage, involved engaged community members. So when I talk to students about this place, you know, if you want to come and be in clubs, um, explore, this is a place you will find that. Um, and if you like to be outside, we have lots of opportunities to get outside, enjoy it. Um, we have a lake campus that's 10 minutes away. As I mentioned, we're close to the mountains. So Davidson Outdoors is a big deal. We have cross country trails right off campus. So we're one of the few small liberal arts campus that is not um, up in the Northeast or you know out West or in kind of that middle section. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug our weather one more time. If you don't wanna have to buy a big winter jacket, you can come down to Davidson, but definitely come check us out. Um, I will put my information and our link in the chat um, and hope you learn more. And I may have actually made it within six minutes. So I did good. You did stay within six minutes. Very well done indeed. And I will remind everyone, if you have questions, just use the Q&A button and there's already been some information sent to you in the chat. So look for that throughout this session. Up next, let's hear from Loyola University, Chicago. Awesome, thank you very much. Um, now onto a school where you will want a warm winter coat and um, the seasons here at Loyola Chicago are lovely. Uh, my name is Emily and um, let me start my time so I don't go over here. Uh, my name is Emily, I'm, I'm a regional admission counselor for Lo Loyola Chicago. What that means is I'm located here close by to you, I'm in the Bay Area. Um, and I work with students from the West Coast. So uh, if you do apply to Loyola Chicago, I'm the one that you'd be working with, I'm the one that would most likely be reading your applications. Um, at Loyola Chicago, sorry, move ahead here. There we go. Um, this is a little bit about who we are um, in numbers, but um, I like uh, you know to start with our roots of being a Jesuit university. Um, I could talk for many, many more minutes than six about what that means, but two things I'll, 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 I'll um, leave you with. That being Je a Jesuit university, we believe in caring for the whole individual, and we see the individual as a mind, body, and a spirit, and we believe all of those need to be healthy and cared for in order for a student to be healthy. Uh, the second thing is that we are very focused on social justice. So um, you're going to find a lot of opportunities here at Loyola Chicago for students to get involved in social justice initiatives. Uh, we believe that it's important for students to uh, get involved as students to 
uh, make an impact on their community. And that really starts here at Loyola Chicago. So that's not only in our mission, but that's also because of that, that's the kind of this type of student we attract are students that um, care about that as well. We are very diverse. We have all 50 states represented, lots of international students as well on our campus. So your roommate could be very likely be from California. It's our number one represented state outside of Illinois. Um, and it's a very vibrant campus because of that. Our students are living on the campus for the most part, a two year residency requirement um, and lots of different options of, of where you can live on our campus. Uh, we're ca Catholic, so you're going to find find a lot of support for our Catholic students, but we also have this really awesome Hall of Religions that offers space um, for, we have a, a student-run mosque there, we have a Punjab prayer center, a kosher kitchen, just spaces for students from lots of religious backgrounds uh, to practice their faith. Um, but we also have a significant number of students coming from non-faith backgrounds. So the takeaway here is all students are welcome on our campus. Um, we have two beautiful campuses in Chicago, and that's one thing that's really unique about us. We have uh, both a traditional feeling campus, it's just north of downtown Chicago in the Rogers Park neighborhood, right on Lake Michigan. And that is a beautiful campus, lots of green space. That's one thing I love about Chicago. I love that it's a big city, has lots to offer in the way that cities offer lots to do. Um, awesome infrastructure, really great public transportation, but we have this beautiful campus in the middle of that city. That is our main campus where you'd be spending the majority of your time as a freshman. Uh, we house some programs on that campus and some programs on our urban campus. Our urban campus is right in the heart of down downtown Chicago. We're right off of Miracle Mile. We've got six large high rise buildings there and it really is a small Loyola campus. It offers all of the basic services that our Lakeshore campus campus offers. So very unique to have that two kind of campus system in the heart of Chicago. Um, this talks a little bit, oh, wonderful city to be a college student in before I move um, into academics for a couple minutes. Uh, just is a really awesome city. I've already mentioned my love of the green spaces in this city and just beautiful setting that we have right on the shores of Lake Michigan. Here you can see the schools that we have. We offer 80 different majors. Our size lets, you know, permits us to have a lot of majors, over 80 different minors as well. Um, but our class sizes are really small. Our, our largest classes are about 70 to 80 students, and that's going to be your Psych 101 class, um, you know, intro to chem class. Uh, these are uh, the, the different um, schools that we have. The one I like to, to highlight is our School for Environmental Sustainability. And that's um, my love for um, sustainability. And just, I'm, I've been really happy to represent a school that um, has been ranked a top eco school for, a, for many years. And it's, um, you know, these efforts are definitely led by our, our School for Envi Environmental Sustainability. One of the cool things they do, they take the runoff, the grease from three cafeterias that we have on campus, they convert that into biodiesel fuel. And that biodiesel fuel powers the shuttles that run between our two campuses. So very easy to get between our Lakeshore campus and our Water Tower campus. And that's powered by French fries that our students eat. So I think that's a pretty unique um, um, attribute of Loyola Chicago. Uh, we also have a direct entry nursing program. We love um, our, our pre-health, pre-med, pre, pre we also have a, a medical school and a law school that aren't mentioned here, but many of our students feed into those programs. Very vibrant campus, as I have already mentioned, um, that students live there right here. This is a, a picture of the campus where most of our students live um, for at least their first two years, and we do have housing for students after um, those first two years as well. Um, every kind of club and sport imaginable, you, including including Quidditch, uh, uh, made famous by um, Harry Potter, is offered on our campus. We have a sorority and a fraternity campus life, but um, we don't have house sorority or fraternity houses. It's a social or a philanthropic um, uh, activity on our campus. Um, we are division one. If you followed basketball this year, we got pretty far and we we're pretty pr proud of that. Um, as a student, you get to go to all sporting events on the campus um, and it's pretty easy uh, to get tickets for those events, which is really fun. I'm going to fly by the application stuff because you can look that up. Um, just the important dates application becomes available 
August 1st, and it closes, uh, or, or that our priority deadline, December 1st. So you just want to apply by that date. Here's a little bit of contact information, but you don't need to pull it from here. I will put it in the chat for you um, in a moment here. I'll hand it back to our facilitator. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. I'll remind everyone about the questions, use the Q&A and the chat. As was mentioned, that you can get information from the reps there. Let's head down I-55 from Chicago to St. Louis and hear from Washington University in St. Louis. Awesome, thanks Russ. Uh, hi everybody, my name is Ellie. I'm an admissions officer at WashU. I'm also an alum, so I actually graduated from the university in 2016 with a major in political science and minors in legal studies and creative writing. Uh, and I'm actually originally from the Bay Area. I grew up in Berkeley, so I know what it's exactly like to be in your shoes, uh, you know, from the Bay Area, interested in schools like what you're seeing today. Um, but I'm going to share with you guys the three most important things to remember about WashU. So if you remember nothing else, remember these three things, and I will show some pretty pictures uh, to really hammer them home. So to start, the number one most important thing to remember about the university is that we have really flexible academics and a huge focus on interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary study. So as you can see here, our university is split into five undergraduate divisions that are all freshman entry. So students go directly into one of the five. The largest is the College of Arts and Sciences. It's where you find the natural sciences, social sciences, and the humanities. And no matter which division students are in at the university, they do take classes in the College of Arts and Sciences. Second largest is the McKelvey School of Engineering. It's where you find all of our majors that end in the word engineering, uh, as well as computer science. Medium-sized school is the Olin Business School. So it's a freshman entry business program with majors like marketing and finance and accounting. They also have some pretty cool minors in things like the business of sports, business of entertainment, social impact. And then our two smallest divisions, which are housed under the Sam Fox School of Design and Visual Arts, are the College of Art and the College of Architecture. Uh, but I say flexible because even though we have these five divisions uh, and there are over 90 majors, minors, and programs that are spread across them and about 1,500 courses that we offer each year, all those classes are open to all of our students, no matter which division they call their home. So we have biomedical engineers who take art classes or an architecture major who's getting a minor in French or an anthropology major who's getting a second major in marketing. So we like to say it doesn't have to make sense to anybody but you what you want to study. And our students definitely do take that to heart. So about 80% will pursue more than just one major. And that can be double majoring, be a major and a minor, two majors and one minor, one major and two minors. We have a rule of three, so students can't like quadruple major or do something crazy. Uh, but if having multiple interests sounds like you, you definitely would not be alone at WashU. And it's the type of environment where that is really supported. Uh, as a matter of fact, we have a number of programs that kind of in and of themselves are very interdisciplinary. So take, for example, our Beyond Boundaries program, which is actually an opportunity for students to enter into WashU unaffiliated with one of the five divisions. Now, this program is really geared towards students who have a particular academic interest or focus uh, or like a question that they know can't really be answered from just one vantage point. So think about the big problems we're facing right now. Uh, things like response to a global pandemic or climate change or gun violence. Like we know the solutions to those problems need to be multifaceted and we want our students to be able to study them in a very multifaceted type of way. So folks that are in Beyond Boundaries, they will eventually graduate from one of the five divisions, but in their first few semesters, they're taking some really cool classes that are all about how to design creative solutions and really think outside the box. And we know that no matter where they go after they graduate, they'll have a very niche skill set to be able to draw upon to help to solve the problems we're going to face tomorrow. So that's just one example of how students really take advantage of interdisciplinary learning at WashU. And that flexibility is the number one most important thing to remember. Number two is that we have a really supportive and collaborative campus environment, both inside and outside the classroom. So inside the classroom, it means that you're not competing against your fellow classmates. It's not the type of environment where in order for one student to do well, other students have to do poorly. Like instead, the way to succeed is to lean on everybody else. And that is something that is reinforced from the very beginning at WashU. And then outside the classroom, it means that no matter what it is that you do or that you're involved in, you have people that are gonna be there to cheer you on. So we have over 400 student groups on campus, you know, everything from cultural organizations, religious groups, political groups, academic clubs, athletic clubs, um, student government, uh, community service, civic engagement are huge on our campus. Um, beekeeping, 
butter churning, we have it all. And if something is not already at WashU, it's very easy to start it. So the list of clubs that we have is always growing. Uh, but like I said, the best part is just the people that you have supporting you. You know, when folks ask me, like, what's one word to describe WashU students? It's really hard because everybody's incredibly different, but all of our students are very passionate, both inside and outside the classroom. But beyond that, they're very supportive of other people's passions. And I think that piece is really key when you're talking about a community. So the support of campus environment is the number two most important thing to remember. And the number three is St. Louis, the city that we are in. It's part of our name. It's something we're incredibly proud of. A fun fact, when I was in high school, there's no way I could have pointed out St. Louis on a map. We're honestly Missouri, if I'm being real, like the middle of the country, it was very foreign to me. And I decided to go to WashU because I loved the school, but I'm still here five years after graduating because I love this city. It's an incredible place. And I think a lot of people have no idea. You know, it's this perfect size city where it's big enough to have everything you want in a nice big city. So it has professional sports teams and cultural attractions, and lots of places to go and things to do but it's small enough to still feel very community oriented, uh, very easy to navigate. We actually make it even easier to navigate by giving each student a free Metro pass. So you get to ride all the St. Louis public transportation completely for free. I cannot emphasize enough how amazing that is. I feel like we're all familiar with the fact that public transportation in the Bay Area is really expensive and it does not go everywhere. So being able to have great access to public transit, we have two Metrolink stops, which is like our BART system on campus. It really means that the entire city is open to you. So uh, students really do get out there to explore. They go to places like Forest Park, which is our, a huge municipal park. It's about 500 acres larger than Central Park in New York City, directly across the street from our campus. We call it our front yard. Uh, they go to games at downtown. Um, they go to the Del Mar Loop, which is the St. Louis Walk of Fame. Lots to do in St. Louis. Uh, and our students are really there for the front row seat. Super briefly, you can see here a little bit about our admissions process. I do wanna highlight you know, that we have early decision one, early decision two and regular decision as well as the quest bridge round. Um, and we are test optional for students who are applying uh, for the fall of 2022. So those are some good highlights. More information can be found on our website and I will link that in the chat. If you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the Q&A, but thank you very much. And I will pass it back over to you guys. Thank you very much. Questions in the Q&A that was just mentioned. Also look in the chat for contact info, links, that sort of thing. I'll stay with the interstate theme and now we'll go east on I-70 from St. Louis to Washington, D.C. for American University. Good evening, everyone. My name is Christina Castleone. I'm an assistant director of admissions at American University in Washington, D.C. So American University is a mid-sized private institution. We're located specifically in the most northwest quadrant of D.C., right below the Bethesda, Maryland area. So we're about four miles from kind of downtown DC, the White House, all the monuments and museums, kind of what you think of when someone says DC. Even though we're not, you know, smack dab in the middle of downtown, students are stay, still able to access everything that DC has to offer because very similar to, to WashU, we also offer our students a, a free Metro pass to use on DC's Metro train system and public uh, bus system during the fall and spring semester. So commuting to an internship, uh, trying out a new restaurant, checking out one of the museums, hanging out on the National Mall with your friends is completely free as a student during the academic year. So we're really proud as the only school in DC to offer that to its students to make sure that all parts of DC, not just AU's campus, are really accessible to our students. So as I mentioned, we are considered mid-sized. We have about 8,200 undergraduates on campus. I do like to highlight the fact that we do have a higher number of undergrads in comparison to graduate and law students on our campus. The reason I think this is so important to talk about is many of our students come to AU looking for research opportunities, specifically with professors or at the departmental level. And when you're at a campus with predominantly undergraduate institution, those uh, opportunities are much easier to come by. So it's very common for undergraduate students to work directly with our professors on different research projects, uh, different kind of innovation and innovations going on at the university level. All of our classes are taught by professors and they're required to hold weekly office hours, weekly office hours. So between that and our small class sizes and low student to faculty ratio, professors are very easily accessible to our undergraduate students. And most professors uh, both teach on campus and work in the DC area, so they're very well connected within their professional networks, which make them great resources for our students to learn about different jobs and internships. 
In terms of our student body, about 32% of our students identify as a student of color, and we represent all 50 states in 122 countries. Fun fact is California is the fifth most represented state from where applicants come from. So even though we are quite literally on the opposite side of the country, we have a very strong representation of students from California. AU is comprised of six undergraduate schools, which you see on the screen. I'm obviously not going to go uh, in depth into all of them, but I do want to highlight a couple things here. First is the level of academic flexibility that our students have. When you apply to AU, you are applying to the university as a whole, not into any of these specific programs. Uh, you can definitely put an intended major on your application, but it doesn't impact the review process. This means that students have a ton of flexibility in the classes they take. You're welcome to take classes across any of these six undergraduate schools. You can double major across schools. You can minor across schools. We really don't limit the types of classes you take. And many students come to AU looking for that flexibility. Another thing I want to highlight is our core curriculum. So AU's kind of general education or core curriculum is unique in that we are less concerned as an institution that students take a math, a science, a humanities course. We're really focused on instilling critical thinking and problem solving skills that are applicable to a wide variety of majors and professional careers that our students participate in or pursue after graduation. So there's a lot of flexibility with our core curriculum as well. Beyond the classroom, internships are a huge component of the AU experience. Almost all of our students, 91% complete an internship before they graduate. That's not because it's a requirement, it's because students come to DC and AU specifically craving that professional experience at the undergraduate level. We have a lot of resources dedicated to helping students find internships through the Career Center, our professors, your academic advisors, and many of our students go on to complete multiple internships by the time they graduate. Study abroad is also extremely popular with our students. Over 70% of our undergraduates go abroad uh, before they graduate. We have 150 total program offerings across 50 different countries and six continents. The great thing about our abroad programs is as long as you go during the fall or spring semesters through one of these approved programs, your tuition and fees will stay the same. If you receive any type of financial aid or scholarships, that money applies to your semester abroad. And ultimately, you're taking classes that are applicable to your degree. So studying abroad is very flexible and accessible to our undergraduate students. I'm not going to really spend too much time here because this is easily accessible on our website, but we also offer three decision types, early decision one, early decision two, and regular decision. I also want to point out that AU is a test optional school. We've been test optional for well over 10 years now, so we thankfully didn't have to change anything due to COVID, and we will continue being test optional in future admission cycles. We also have a handful of special academic programs. These are the only programs that require a separate application in addition to your admissions application. The ones on the left are your three-year programs. These are accelerated programs to earn your undergraduate degree in three years. And the ones on the right are open to any undergraduate student to apply for. Uh, again, these are the only programs that require a separate application, but everyone else is just applying to American University as a whole. Uh, and please stay connected with us. This is our contact information. Similarly to the other schools who presented before, I will also pass along this information as well as my personal contact information um, in the chat. So please feel free to stay connected. I represent North, the Northern California area. So happy to chat with uh, any of you uh, for further questions about American. Thank you very much. And again, the, Q the Q&A button is where you can ask questions and uh, look in the chat for information that the representatives are sending you. Well, I've lost kind of the interstate theme because there's no real direct route up straight north, even though it is straight north into New York to the next school from American. But we'll hear now from Hobart and William Smith College. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Caroline Turco. I am one of the assistant directors of admissions here at Hobart and William Smith. Um, I do apologize, my camera is acting up, so I guess I will go ahead and get started. Um, so HWS is located in Geneva, New York, so right at the top of Seneca Lake. Um, sorry, my computer's acting up, which is the largest of all of the Finger Lakes. And we are right in between Rochester and Syracuse. So about 45 minutes either direction. Uh, we are a small liberal arts college with a little over 2000 students total. 
Um, HWS was founded as two separate colleges. So Hobart on the men's side in 1822 and William Smith a little bit later um, in 1908. HWS now operates under a coordinate college system. All students share the same campus, faculty, administration, and curriculum. Um, each student or each college maintains its own traditions, uh, deans, student government, athletic departments, giving students additional leadership opportunities. Um, let's see, we have all of the hallmarks that a traditional liberal arts school would have, such as the small class sizes, um, opportunities to build relationships with faculty and staff, um, study abroad opportunities, but we do have a few things that are pretty unique about our school and our curriculum. Um, first being that um, our curriculum our curriculum, we do not have traditional distribution requirements. Uh, we don't feel it's important to take, you know, a specific class such as a math class, but we do require a quantitative reasoning based class. Um, another example would be students don't have to necessarily take an English class. However, we do require um, a student take a class that meets the goal of communication. Um, so our faculty created an eight goal system at the colleges to make sure students graduate with eight key skills. Um, students will meet regularly with their advisor over the course of their four years here to make sure that they are meeting that eight goal system um, within the classes that they've selected. These goals include quantitative reasoning, communication, critical thinking, scientific inquiry, artistic process, social inequalities, cultural difference, and ethical judgment. Um, so the nice thing is that there is only one required class during your time at HWS, and that is your freshman seminar, and that professor will then become your advisor. Um, the second thing that's pretty unique about the colleges is that we require two areas of focus. Um, so you will either graduate with a double major or a major and a minor. So if you're someone who has multiple areas of interest, we are the perfect place for you because we are going to make you do just that. Um, why that works is because most of our academic programs are in two areas, meaning that they are disciplinary majors or they are interdisciplinary majors. Um, the disciplinary majors are what you would expect the small liberal arts colleges to have, the histories, the biologies, the political science classes. Um, the other half of these are the interdisciplinary majors, um, the international relations, because they pull from history, political science, economics. Um, another good example would be your environmental studies, which pulls from the biologies, the chemistries. Um, an average class size here would be about 16 students, um, and we have a 10 to 1 student to faculty ratio. The colleges offers 45 majors and 68 minors. Some popular majors include international relations, political science, sociology, environmental studies, um, and architecture is actually becoming uh, a pretty popular major. As far as graduate programs go, the only master's program that we offer is um, a master's of teacher's education. However, we do have a few joint degree programs for engineering with Columbia and Dartmouth, and then we offer a pre-law program with Cornell. Uh, we also have many centers on campus that students actively participate in that will become great additions on their resume. Um, first, we have our Centennial Center for Leadership, and this um, Center has a program where you can get a leadership certificate. It will get stamped on your transcript once you graduate. Um, another great one is our Finger Lakes Institute where you will study the science of our Finger Lakes um, and other great research opportunities. We have um, our Guerin Center for the Arts, which is a great building on campus that houses opportunities for music, theater, and dance. Um, we have our Center for Teaching and Learning. That's where students will go if they want to get better at something um, with writing skills or if they need to get a paper reviewed, all sorts of those kind of things if, if they wanna get extra help. Um, let's see. We also have our Salisbury Career Center, which, are, which is our um, amazing career services center here at the colleges. They provide a service called the Pathways Program. Um, our Pathways Program is our career development plan that's open to all students where you are guaranteed an internship or a research study. And if, this, if these aren't paid for, then the colleges will provide a stipend, which is pretty great. Um, so the first year with the program is all about assessment, so figuring out interests and personalities. The second year is about exploring different career paths, um, learning how to network with alums and possibly doing job shadows. Third year is about, you know, experience, so attending workshops, internships, campus involvement, all uh, things like that. The final year is about marketing yourself effectively. So job searching, graduate school applications, uh, learning how to negotiate offers. 
Um, so this center will really help you to develop your resume, do mock job interviews, and so many other key things that will help set up our students for success and getting jobs later in life. Um, these are just some of the examples of where some of our students are interning. Some other um, cool facts about the colleges is that over 60% of our students will study abroad at some point in their time here. Most of these are faculty led programs offered every semester in most, most countries around the world. Um, we have 23 varsity sports teams playing D3 in the Liberty League. 90% um, of our students are receiving some sort of financial aid. And here is our application process, some of our dates. And here is my contact information. Thank you all so much. Thank you very much. And I'm going to ask all of our reps to uh, come back on camera and or turn on their microphone. Certainly the microphones are the most important part because I'm going to do a quick Q&A here in the little less than five minutes that we have left, have you answer in the same order that you presented. And the question I have for everyone, what one piece of advice would you give someone going through the college search process right now? We'll start with Williams College. Yeah, so I would say, um, you know, to the students sort of taking a moment before you, um, are, you know, potentially get sort of overwhelmed with all the different websites and different things that you'll look at and thinking about what other colleges or what colleges are looking for. Um, think about what you're looking for. What um, have you found fulfilling? What have you liked? What have you not liked um, so far? Um, and how does that inform what you want out of your college experience? Um, and so that I think will help you sort of center yourself in this search process and, and think about the college that best fits um, for who you are and what you're interested in. Davidson College. Yeah, I think I'm going to switch it up this round and go with the more practical and advice that you probably don't want to hear, but you're going to need to check your email this year um, and check it often and find a way to manage it that works for you, whether that is unsubscribing from anything that does not work for you. Do not unsubscribe from schools you're interested in because then you won't get reminders if your application's incomplete or something. Um, but that is the only way for us to really communicate with you. So check your email, especially for places that you have applied or interested in, because we're gonna be telling you things like, hey, we need more information for financial aid or your application is not complete. We're trying to help you. And that is how we're gonna do that. So it's a lot, we get it, but check your email. Loyola University, Chicago. So my piece of advice is to take advantage of all of the resources that are out there to help you get to know campuses. Um, this last year has brought you know, a lot of difficult things. One of the great things that it has brought is that universities are now able, you know, reaching out to you in so many different ways. And tonight's a great example of that. Um, you, know, you can attend this from the comfort of your home. And we're doing so many things. Um, you know, I know Loyalist Chicago, you can reach out, you can connect with students via Zoom. You can do drugs drop in uh, you know, Zoom meetings with all kinds of uh, departments. We have weekends that, that are virtual. We didn't have these in the past. And now you can explore, a uh, I'd say, a larger variety of schools uh, to help you really you know, uh, uh, figure out what school's a good fit. You don't just have to visit four students uh, or four campuses in person. You can visit a lot more virtually to help you narrow it down, um, getting to know campuses in a, in a more unique, different way this year. Washington University, St. Louis. Yeah, so mine's a little bit more of what not to do, uh, and that's to not get involved in things just because you think that colleges want to see it, or to, um, it's really just mostly to be yourself in the application. It's super, super important to remember that, that we want to admit you, not who you think we want to admit. And authenticity is an incredibly important part of an admissions process because we want to see people who will be great fits for our campus community. And we can only kind of determine that if you're being your true self in the application. So it's to get involved in things that, that interest you most because that will be what uh, speaks most to colleges that are a good fit for you. American University. My piece of advice is to go through this process with an open mind. There are thousands of schools across the country, many that you have not heard of. There are more than just the Ivies and the UC system, although those are fantastic schools. Um, but there are just so many schools that can, you know, really cater to your specific majors or involvement or values. 
Um, and so go through this process with an open mind and be willing to look at schools that you may not have heard of um, or that may not have been kind of on your radar at your initial search process. So take a look at many different schools across the country would be my recommendation. Hobart and William Smith Colleges. Um, two things that come to mind. First, don't stress. Um, I know that this this can definitely be a stressful process, but um, try not and pan try not to panic because you will find a home. Um, and then my second piece of advice would be interviews are so helpful in this process for us because I mean, besides the grades and the test scores and all that good stuff, we want to know you better as a human being and as a person. So um, I would definitely advise. Um, you guys to take advantage of interviews if you can. Well, thank you all for sharing that great advice. And also thank you for sharing the information about each of your institutions. And I wanna thank all of our attendees for joining us. When you close this window, there'll be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Also, there are more sessions coming up, including one tonight and then some tomorrow. So be sure to sign up for more if you haven't done so already same place you signed up for this one. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all the other session recordings, strivescan.com slash BACS, B-A-C-S. Once again, thank you to our representatives for presenting during this session. Thank you very much. Thank you all for joining us. Have a great rest of your Tuesday.